I'm making this video uh, in support of Donna Edwards. The woman you see on the left, obviously, is Donna Edwards, and uh, she's running for Senate from the state of Maryland, and she's running against Chris Van Hollen. Uh, these two people's histories could not be more dissimilar. Donna Edwards was uh, born uh, in 1958 uh, in Yanceyville, North Carolina. She earned a bachelor's degree, well two actually, in English and Spanish from Wake Forest University where she was only uh, one of six uh, black women in her class. Uh, she went on to attend uh, the University of New Hampshire Law School where she earned uh, her law degree. She began work in the uh, political sphere, sphere I'm sorry, uh, when she worked for Albert Wynn uh, as a clerk in the 1980s while he served in the Maryland House of uh, Delegates. Her career really took off when uh, she was elected in a special election in 2008 as the uh, House of Representatives member from Maryland's 4th Congressional District. That district includes most of Prince George's County as well as part of Anne Arundel County. Obviously a lawyer, she's been a long time a community activist and she actually defeated the person that she clerked for uh, in that 2008 uh, Democratic uh, primary. She, uh, once uh, she won, he resigned and she won a special election in June, on June 17th of 2008 and filled out the remainder of his term and uh, she subsequently ran for a full term in November of 2008 uh, and she won with 85% of the vote. She is a single mother with one son from the information that I can obtain. If you want to counter that with Chris Van Holen, Mr. Van Holen was born in uh, Karachi, Pakistan he was the eldest of three children to uh, his American parents, Edith and Christopher Van Holen. So that makes him, I guess, Christopher Van Holen the sec Jr. or the second. His father was a foreign service officer who served as deputy assistant secretary of state for Near Eastern Affairs and a U.S. ambassador to Sri, Sri Lanka. And his mother worked in, for the CIA and the State Department where she served as chief of the Intelligence Bureau of South Asia. He spent uh, parts of his early life in Pakistan, Turkey, India, and Sri Lanka, and he returned to the United States for his junior year of high school and attended Middlesex School in Concord, Massachusetts, where his grandfather once taught. He is an alumnus of Kodakanal, International School, a very prestigious school in southern India. At 82, uh, Van Holen graduated from Swarthmore College with a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy. He continued his studies at Harvard where he earned a Master's of Public Policy degree concentrating in National Security Studies from the John F. Kennedy School of Government. So one a person went to Harvard, which obviously was uh, Van Holen, and the other uh, person went to uh, Wake Forest. Again, um, both obviously good schools, but one obviously a more quote unquote prestigious school than the other. If you really uh, wanna look at these things, uh, these two people, Mr. Van Holen, is a product of privilege, both uh, from uh, his upbringing all the way through his shepherdship uh, in the House of Representatives by uh, Nancy Pelosi. 
This gentleman has served in the House of Representatives on the Committee on the Budget, where he was the ranking member uh, while the Democrats were in power. And he also served on the Joint Select Committee on Deficit Reduction. He is part of the uh, House Democratic Party leadership. Again, as I stated, he was a ranking member on the House Budget Committee. He was the Vice Chairman of the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, Efficiency Caucus, Co-Chairman of the Congressional Soccer Caucus, Co-Chairman of the Chesapeake Bay Watershed Task Force, Co-Chairman of the Congressional Caucus on Global Road Safety, Vice Chairman of the Democratic Task Force on Budget and Tax Policy, Member of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, Member of the Sustainable Energy and Environmental Coalition, Member of the International Conservation Caucus, Member of the Congressional Chesapeake Bay Watershed Caucus, and the Chairman of the Congressional Down Syndrome Caucus. So again, uh, this guy looks like he was groomed uh, for the uh, political career uh, that uh, he currently enjoys. One thing that you didn't know was that in 2010, Van Holen was the chairman of the Democratic, I'm sorry, um, I was saying that Nancy Pelosi created a new leadership post for uh, Mr. Van Holen. The uh, post was assistant to the speaker. So Van Holen could be uh, present at all leadership meetings. After the Democrats regained the House, control of the House in the 2006 elections, Van Holen became the chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee of the fifth ranking position among House Democrats. That committee is in charge of getting people elected. In 2010, after the Democrats uh, lost control of the House, Van Holen did not run for re-election because he was obviously an abject failure. He decided uh, to run uh, for the Democratic spot on the House Budget Committee, which was being vacated by Chairman uh, John uh, Spratt, who had been uh, defeated for re-election. Van Holen was elected as the ranking member of the Budget Committee uh, in 2010, and Pelosi appointed him to the 12-member Bipartisan Committee on Deficit Reduction with a mandate for finding major budget reductions for late 2011. In 2013, Pelosi appointed Van Holen to serve on the Bicameral Conference Committee. So that just gives you an indication of Mr. Van Holen. He uh, represents uh, one of the richest districts in the state of Maryland. And just based on his, his background, his upbringing, and what he has been given, and I do mean given, by Nancy Pelosi, he is definitely uh, an establishment uh, figure, and he has benefited from privilege. And you can call it white privilege, whatever privilege you want. But uh, he is obviously one of Nancy Pelosi's favorites. I'm going to uh, bring that up later on in the video um, for a specific reason. Now, if we're talking about Donna Edwards, I gave you some information as to um, her previous history. Obviously, um, she was a community activist. She co-founded and served as the first executive director of the National Network to End Domestic Violence, an advo advocacy and uh, legal support group for battered women. She worked to pass the 1994 Violence Against Women's Act. She uh, later worked with Public Citizen and then as the director, uh, executive director of the Center for a New Democracy. In 2000, she became the executive director of ARCA Foundation, uh, taking a leave of absence from her uh, political campaign. 
In the spring of 2015, Donna Edwards, along with several other members of the House of Representatives, introduced the Restoring Education and Learning Act to bring back Pell Grants to prisoners. Edwards' press release outlines numerous advantages to prisoner education, including net benefits to taxpayers who bear the cost of recidivism. Donna Edwards also uh, sponsored uh, various bills, including a bill to uh, basically revoke Citizens uh, United. Donna Edwards, throughout her career, obviously has been an advocate uh, for women, women's rights, etc. She has served on various uh, committees in Congress, including the Subcommittee on Space and Aeronautics, where she was the ranking member, Subcommittee on Environment on the Environment. She served on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, which uh, covered uh, economic development, public building, and emergency management. It also covered uh, highways and transit, as well as water resources and the environment. She is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. Now, let me roll back uh, to Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi is one of the most uh, powerful women in government today. And anybody who knows anything about uh, government knows that in the Democratic Party in the House, you do not cross Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi has made Mr. Van Hollen one of her favorites and handed him plum uh, assignments and positions, even though when uh, he received the uh, position that was uh, supposed to help reelect Democrats into the, the uh, House in 2010, and he had only had that position uh, for uh, less than four years, he failed miserably. But that didn't matter because uh, he was one of Pelosi's pets, so he was handed another plum position. Donna Edwards, it, as I stated, is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. The Congressional Black Caucus has not endorsed anyone in this particular race. Now, you would think that since she's a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, that they would, as a group, have endorsed her, but as individuals, they would have gone running to her for several reasons. One, she is absolutely a progressive. Two, her election to the Senate would have been historical for many reasons. Obviously, being the first African-American woman elected to the Senate from the state of Maryland, and only the second African-American woman elected to the Senate, period. But more so than anything else, she brings a new perspective to the Senate if elected. There are any number of senators that have similar backgrounds to Mr. Van Hollen, but I charge you with finding a single senator that has a similar background to Donna Edwards. That makes a difference. Her perspective is something that is needed. The Democratic Party is constantly talking about diversity this and diversity that. Well, in my opinion, the Democratic Party needs to put their money where their mouth is, and especially the Congressional Black Caucus. Now, Recently, Donna has obtained the support of a major, and I do mean major, political contribution donor. That donor is uh, Mr. Donald Sussman, and he has contributed $2.1 million to the Donna Edwards uh, election committee through various uh, PACs. 
Mr. Sussman normally is not a person who uh, seeks the limelight, but uh, he has, over the years, contributed approximately $12 million to uh, the uh, Democratic coffers. The uh, PACs that are in support of Mr. Van Hollen became very upset uh, with that particular donation by Mr. Sussman because normally where Sussman goes, a lot of other donors follow. Mr. Sussman was asked why he uh, decided to make the, a major contribution to um, Ms. Edwards' uh, campaign. He stated, I care deeply about making sure our democracy reflects the makeup of our country and represents the value we share. I believe Donna Edwards is one of those candidates that was the reason, and that was the reason for my support. The money is a large investment for uh, Sussman, and he's a hedge fund manager, and uh, the only part that uh, he has ever really played uh, in his uh, foray into democratic politics was uh, when he uh, basically spends uh, or contributes money to democratic candidates that he feel are progressive. So obviously, Mr. Sussman feels that uh, Ms. Edwards is uh, more progressive than uh, Mr. Van Hollen and is uh, needed. Um, his friends uh, have commented that uh, he simply wants to see the country that has policies that provide opportunity for everybody, particularly those who need a little help. He really believes that with a diversity of voices in our government, we will get policies that will represent the needs of the entire community. I couldn't agree with him more. Basically, I'm saying that Chris Van Hollen represents more of the same. He represents privilege. He represents go along to get along. He represents uh, things being handed to him, whereas Donna Edwards represents the progressive side of the party. She's worked her way up, earned everything that she's gotten. She doesn't smooth around with uh, other uh, politicians. Her, she basically is focused on getting the job done. We need to throw all of our support behind her and get this woman elected into the Senate so that she can make a difference.